The last thing today is lights. Lights are like really relatively simple. Um, they are like traditional bulbs, flashers, GIs, kind of that kind of stuff, which is uh, relatively high current. So those they they, they yeah they burn a, quite some current. And there are basically two ways to drive those. That's either directly or via a light matrix. And directly is very similar to coils. So you got a power supply, you got your lamp or flasher or whatever, or GI or a GI string, and then you connect it to ground via a field effect transistor. Um, in bulbs, you do not need like a free flow diode, like you need on, co on coils because there's no like magnetic field involved. This is actually like the circuit you are needing. So you can use any driver on a driver board that will just work. Sometimes there are special drivers for GIs, with, which are a little bit with different transistors, but it's it's very similar. For flashers, they are also often used like on, on traditional um, bulbs, uh, traditional drivers, because they run like a really high current for a very short time and they are practically pulsed only. Um, for traditional bulbs, there's often a light matrix if you still use them and it's more like for, for existing machines, I guess. And uh, this light matrix works like this. Um, bear with me that I took the wrong transistors here, but um, if you know how transistors work, then you're probably not. <laughs> looking uh, at this, so um, uh, yeah, so the, if you already know, then <laughs> you, you don't need this one, right? So you got the power supply here, typically like 12 volts something, and then you got like those, so you want to minimize outputs again. So typically you got like a matrix by eight, eight versus eight rows versus columns, so 64, 64 lights in the matrix. And then you get a row here and a column here. And then you enable this driver and and then you basically con control this row. And then if you want this lamp on, you put this one on. And if you do not want this on, you put this one off, right? Afterwards, you disable this, enable this one, and then control those two lamps. The the reason why this works pretty well with, with bulbs is that they, they afterglow. So even if you disable them, they will yeah, they will, be, they will keep on for like, I don't know, 20, 50, 50, 50 to 100 milliseconds. So because they are like actually um, yeah, heating up some, some wire inside, right? So it takes time to cool down. And for that reason, this works. So they, they go they call the, 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 the rows up, down, up, down with like, I don't know, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, something. So it's relatively fast, but that's enough to keep those bulbs light enough often they use also like six volt bulbs and 12 volts voltage because they are only enabled or like driven for like a short amount of time. i guess nobody would do this today but still that's that's how it's done um or like very few people do this today and the, the way how it's often done today is this way that's um serial lights and for serial lights you got chains so you got one light which changes the next one into the next one to the next one. And for serial lights, you would only need to chain like the signal, right? The, the, the control signal. But often ways, or usually, you also chain like power from one LED to the next LED. And often ways, for example, here you run two chains and first LED feeds like five volts and ground. And then this feeds to the second one and that one to the third one and the same on the other chain in general i would recommend to run like a lot of chains because um you can imagine that there's resistance here in those wires and this wire in the beginning here has to basically carry the current for all of those LEDs behind it right so this should be either really thick um or you you won't have you we will have problems that the voltage drops at the end and that's that's one of the usual problems in uh, in serial lights. So what you can do is you can also connect the, the power supply unit a second time here. So you can connect it here or at the end. Um, I mean, for example, in my machine, I run like chains with 30 lights only each. And then I connect at the end and at the beginning, and then it's super stable. 
but you can theoretically also put 1000 lights in a chain but then you have to tap power into the chain more often that's just just to keep into mind in mind right um and i did a stream on this one if you want the nitty-gritty details about like serial lights did you wire power also to the end of the led chain what do you think how much LEDs should be running a chain in my opinion like 30. so that's that's my take on it so i mean controller wise so for example fade candy they they recommend but i think they even support up to 64 leds because otherwise like the, the update frequency goes down on the chain and uh, but like for power reasons i run like chains of 30 and because like it's not it's not so expensive to have multiple chains for example fake candy has like eight chains eight chains with the 30 leds that's uh, more than enough for most machines right and um, over 200 leds is it? yeah it's over four yeah it's a lot of leds and that's that's in my opinion a good like a trade-off and also like if if something fails in your chain sometimes it happens then um then uh then it's easier to debug right i mean 50 leds is still fine then definitely connected at the end at 50 leds otherwise your voltage will just drop too much and i personally recommend to to actually measure the voltage at the worst point in your chain so if, if you just wired in the beginning then at the end if you wire at the end and in the beginning then in the middle put it at full brightness white and then measure at the middle and for ws 2811 um, uh, it should be uh, yeah it should be at least um, three and a half volts and better four and a half so what are the specs should be like four and a half and if it drops below that like then white will become a little bit bluish and you will run you will start to run into reliability issues at some point so make sure that the voltages are just high enough on your serial leds and i mean 30 is just my take but 50 also works so we got like um got those like long long um, chains uh those flexible chains right They're on the bottom of my machine with like 50 or just um yeah, lighting the the bottom below the machine so it also works but uh, if you want not to play field i would like run would be a little bit would be try to be a little bit on the safe side of things right so that you won't get flickering and so on because that sometimes happens if voltage drops too much and you definitely have like interference between the play field, below the play field it's like a hostile environment for fids right <laughs> um yeah yeah then that's probably the reason for that and actually measure it. i recommend to measure it and then you will see and you will also find out that they would draw a lot of current and in my machine at some point i lost like one volt between the play field and the beginning of the chain because i was just drawing 20 amps out of my five volt supply and with like zero leds and uh, the voltage drop is um current versus resistance right if the current goes up your um your voltage drop will also go up right and we actually ended up with like a supply at 5.5 volts instead of 5 volts because that gives you a little bit more headroom it's inside the specifications for ws 2811 um, so that's fine um, and then we ran like um, two of those in parallel for just five volts and um, just to have like a lot uh, enough yeah low enough resistance and um remember those is like it's less than 0.01 ohm only so <laughs> that uh, sometimes adds up and we also had like um two of those right um two two to have two connectors then because one of those connectors is only rated for seven amps and if you run like 10 amps those will look like the old wpc um boards uh, after like 10 years right if they turn black and actually the plastic breaks off that's usually because they get too hot so if in doubt right if it's more than seven amps run like two connectors then then you're on a safe side because then they won't get too hot and also you won't you will have less voltage drop thank you for listening thank you for for joining in thank you for asking questions uh i wish you like a great Great evening or afternoon.
uh, have yeah have a great time um build pinball stay safe i mean <laughs> keep the safety things in in mind it's still dangerous um if you're uncareful um, but uh, if you do those things then it's my opinion relative safe and um yeah see you soon around in one of the chats or or here maybe saturday and until then um have fun and uh build some pinball